Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike. Uh, I do apologize if I sound a bit different than my previous episodes. I'm messing with some mic settings on my own end, so just be patient with me as I try and uh, figure some stuff out. But today, I actually have a guest with me. I am joined with Goldie. Um, God, you have like a very impressive resume here. Um, <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are a YouTube content creator. I would say you do like kind of video essays, talking about like media, uh, you uh, stream, you also compete competitively in Overwatch. Um, Goldie, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thank you for asking. Um, okay, so I know I gave you a very brief introduction, but I guess if you want to kind of expand on that and, and, and explain in your own words uh, what you do and what motivates the content that you create. Yeah, I got you. Uh, every time I've been asked this, I kind of just say uh, I make gay video essays. Uh, <laughs> the video that kind of like sparked everything was uh, my video, Why Are Fighting Games So Gay? And uh, I originally made that actually as a class project um, last uh, beginning of this year. Um, and there was a very big reaction to that, both positive and some negative. But um, really just people saying that they resonated with the video and really appreciated me speaking on that topic has really motivated me to keep making stuff. And I guess since, uh, you know, we're leaning into that topic anyways, uh, yeah, like, I, I think that one is, like, your biggest one. You saw, like, a huge uh, subscribe boost mm -hmm. with that video. Um, were you expecting to achieve that, that, that amount of success with that, one, with that video in particular? No, no, not at all. Um, <laughs> it, was, it was very, very surprising, but, you know, very welcome. Uh, <laughs> that was originally, uh, like I said, for a class, it was just a little seven-minute video, like, proof of concept that I made. And uh, I ended up actually getting nominated for um, best documentary at my uh, college, and uh, I thought I thought I was onto something, and so I just you know kept researching the topic and was just really into it. Well, yeah, it's an amazing. It's honestly how I found you, if I have to be honest. <laughs> um, but no, uh, not to bury the lead too much because you have talked about it in your own uh, content, I believe, even in your own most recent video. But you are also studying in college uh, film production. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Um, I guess, I guess, what was the, kind of the journey that led you to like that? Like, what what um, led you to wanting to study film? Yeah. Uh, so I always say that I I love making films. I don't watch them. <laughs> um, when I was like little, I obviously I grew up with with YouTube, and uh, I just I've always loved watching YouTube videos, like from those old like Minecraft videos in the 2010s to like now more video essay s commentary type stuff. And so a lot of YouTubers really got me into like just wanting to make my own stuff. I remember when I was little and screen recording Minecraft with my own commentary and editing on some third party app on my phone when I was like 12 <laughs> and just, um, yeah, I, I love doing that. And then in high school, uh, my high school had a program called video productions and I joined that freshman year and I ended up sticking with the entire program all throughout my senior year. And by the end, I was pretty much the assistant teacher in that class. And uh, it was just so much fun getting to make stuff like it, it's a lot of fun. And so when college rolled around, I decided this is what I wanted to keep doing and kind of go more into video editing and stuff like that, because that's what I really love doing. And I guess I, I also want to ask, because uh, you mentioned, I think, in your latest video that, um, you know, you're pursuing film production, but at the same time, like your life, like a kind of goal, like, like you mentioned, your goal is to do like, um, YouTube, uh, that you want to do like YouTube full time as basically kind of your career. So, um, I guess, uh, I guess how, how would I want? So do you have any aspirations for like filmmaking in general? Because you just said right now, I know that you don't like watch films yourself, but, um, <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I, I mean, you, yeah. I was gonna say, I mean, like, yeah, um, yes and no. It kind of comes and goes. Like um, last year, which was my freshman year, my second semester, um, actually getting to, I was a DP on a couple of shoots as well as the director on one of my own shoots, and that was like a ton of fun, but also a ton of stress. And um, it's a lot. It's a lot of fun when you're actually there doing it, but. I don't know, just a lot of the whole, um, I guess I would say like ecosystem uh, and 
Hollywood and all that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily interest me. And I know being an indie film like maker is very difficult. <laughs> and um, well, I, I do. I do love doing it. It's also I think YouTube, I like being my own boss, but I also don't like to boss people around. So being a director is not really the best route for me. And um, yeah, being on set is fun and awesome, but I just have more fun making my own silly little things. And if I can do that, I would absolutely love to do that. <laughs> oh, that's interesting because I always kind of, I mean, not like seriously, but I always kind of wondered like, um, you know, as YouTube over time, became kind of uh because like thinking back to like uh i don't know like the youtube red era i like to call it <laughs> yeah, yeah you would have like creators that would treat youtube as like a means to an end you know that mm -hmm. like oh i would start on youtube but eventually i have the goal of breaking out to hollywood to do like mm -hmm. movies or television right and you kind of see that and you kind of saw that reflected with like the youtube red original shows right in the sense that right right they, right making like your big content creators like the stars of like scripted content which i hated i hated that <laughs> period of youtube scare right? pewdiepie youtube reddit <laughs> exclusive i like that weird like game grumps one uh, i'm yeah. getting off topic yeah. um, <laughs> but um but now i think you're kind of seeing this shift where people are treating youtube as like you know an end in and of itself so i right. i wonder if you are going to get more of this trend of people um, you know, going into like studying film production, but just to do it to become YouTubers. Like, I, I don't know, because you're probably surrounded by way more of those people <laughs> than me. Um, is, is there kind of a trend like that? Um, yes and no. There was one kid in one of my lectures that I know that did YouTube and seemed like that's what he wanted to do with the knowledge that he was gaining in the class. Everyone else, though, did seem to really um, gravitate more towards actually doing real, quote unquote, real film stuff. Um, and I was kind of I was kind of the weirdo, you know, but um, I think in environments in other environments, there are definitely a lot more people that want to do YouTube as as their whole job. I think especially with kids growing up now with YouTube their entire lives, um, they just see it as this kind of like free job or you're the own or your own boss and they want to do that. So, no, oh, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, especially since, um, you know, it's kind of like an offshoot from like independent filmmaking, except to like mm -hmm. uh, your distribution model is kind of handled in a way. Although, <laughs> you know, I don't necessarily like YouTube's algorithm itself, but you know, it's it's a lot better than I think. You know, um, hoping that you get picked, like your work gets picked up by a studio. But I get that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But uh, talking about your latest video, it's like you recently celebrated your 20th birthday. So congrats Didn't on eat. that. Thank you. Um, what, what's weird to me also is that uh, I think technically, at least from reading your bio, you've been in content creation actually longer than me, <laughs> which is weird <laughs> because I think I've been uh, at this like for four approaching five years. But you yeah. said, like, I think in your bio, like about like eight years. So, yeah, my first, my first video, my first channel was actually in 2015 when I was what a uh, 12 ish, 13. Does it still exist <laughs> or no? It does still exist, um, but you can't. It, I just gave it like a basic like default channel name, so I still have it. I still have access to it, or I don't have access to it. I lost the email. Uh, you can find it, but it would be very difficult without the link. <laughs> yeah, so I have some lost media, some goldy lost media. There's some, there's some goldy lost media. There's also about, I want to say, 700 private videos on my channel, my current channel. 700? Um, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Was, why, why 700? Yeah. Uh, give or take. Um, I, well, as you mentioned uh, in the intro, I, I don't participate in Overwatch competitively as of right now but i've been playing overwatch for about seven years or i played overwatch for about seven years and i've always made content on it like i used to upload almost every other day during the entirety of middle school and high school and live stream and just make a ton of content on the game uh but it doesn't really fit what i like to do now and but i didn't want to get rid of the videos so they're all sitting in my youtube studio private <laughs> oh fair enough fair enough so um i guess I mean, I guess I already kind of know the answer to this, but I guess to have <laughs> you explain in your own words, 
Um, what do you think has been like the biggest sh- like shift in your content over the years? Um, the biggest shift. Um, well, I, I might give an answer you might not be expecting. Uh, a while back, there was this show that a lot of people were talking about negatively, and it was really like uh, really popular to hate it. Really popular to hate on this show. And I originally made this like twenty page script, just absolutely destroying everything. Whatever. I uh, I ended up just I, I recorded that video and I just felt really really unhappy. Like I I didn't think I was contributing anything to the conversation, and so instead I decided to try to um, look at the show in a more positive light. And I ended up doing that. That was my very first kind of video essay I made uh, back in 2022, and uh, it kind of just changed how i looked at things in general i thought it was more fun to look at them in a positive way even if it was the more unpopular opinion and that's kind of just framed how i've liked making videos ever since okay so not really like criticism so much but more like uh, just general praise of things. yeah not necessarily praise but trying to find the good in some things that people dislike um if i happen to also like it <laughs> <laughs> i got you yeah, I gotcha. I mean, unfortunately, it's not really an approach that I, I take myself. Um, <laughs> um, but no, no, I do, I do, I do respect it. I think. Um, so, uh, you being such a huge Overwatch player, uh, <laughs> from my understanding, well, you know what's also interesting about your history with Overwatch is that you explained in your recent video that you actually weren't drawn in by like the original cinematic that came out with it. Is that correct? Yeah, no, I thought it looked stupid. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, because as far yeah. as I know, a lot of people really like got into it because of that cinematic, and people were, you know, every time right. Overwatch came out with a cinematic, they were like, oh man, why doesn't Blizzard just get into like making a show with this again to like, you know, yep, yep. what happened with Arcane and League of Legends? Yeah, I've I've never really been into the Overwatch lore or anything. Uh, I I used to watch the cinematics. I I haven't watched them. I know they haven't really been making any new ones as of late. But like I know there was the Kiriko one and the Juno one. I haven't checked those ones out. Like I don't know. <laughs> but um. So I get. So okay. Then what is the drop? Because what else is there with Overwatch? <laughs> I mean, I, I, that's me. I'm I I love losing. <laughs> no. Um. Uh, for me, it was it was Lucio, the character Lucio. I absolutely adore his play style. Uh, you know, you can ride on all the walls. You can kind of act as a DPS if you're good enough. Um, I think in in all my time in Overwatch, I've spent over 500 hours on Lucio alone. At least on my main account, I've I've had like 10 or 12 accounts. <laughs> so, and uh, I just I just love Lucio. He always draws me back. Just that play style of being able to hop around and just assassinate people while you're still technically a support character has just I just love it. So one character is has led to like this um yep. <laughs> this whole long career of you playing Overwatch. this addiction. <laughs> um, yeah, pretty much. I also know that well, at least from what I remember and again, you're you're the Overwatch player so you could probably tell me more than anything. <laughs> um from my understanding, like there was kind of a lot of disdain as people moved from like the first Overwatch into the second one. Like for myself personally, I was hyped for um, like the single player like story content that they were they were proposing with the release, but that you know they canceled it eventually. Mm-hmm. Um, but so yeah, I guess what was your perception of like that you know that whole um, kind of discourse? I would say. Yeah, as like as someone who I said I don't I didn't really care about the story of Overwatch. I didn't really care too much about the PVE. Um I don't know. I originally didn't really like the 5v5 idea. It's had its moments for sure. Um I know now people are kind of starting to get tired of it and getting wanting 6v6 back cuz that was the whole main thing for me. But um yeah, I don't know. I've always been kind of neutral on it. Like, like I said, it had its moments. Uh, I kind of had to relearn how to play support in some ways, because the way I've always described it is kind of more of a free for all type type feel now. Um, and I've had to improve aspects of my game that I never thought I would have to. Um, but I mean, it's it's been fun. I I haven't I've been uh, I haven't played Overwatch for about three or four months ever since like my video kind of took off. I've just been working on video stuff, but. Um, from what I last played, like it was, it was all right. <laughs> oh, fair enough, fair enough. Um, I think the latest release was, um, oh god, what's her name? She's Juno. Like, uh, 
like a astronaut character. I can't remember her name. In my life. Yeah, Juno. Juno. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So I guess um. How how do I want to word the question? <laughs> um. So with your wire fighting games, gay, uh, video. Um. Well, I guess I kind of have to lean for. Uh, first more you said that like um, one of your big fighting games that you uh, play and I, I think also competed in was uh, Smash 4 or Smash uh, Ultimate? Smash Ultimate, yes. Okay. And that was like your first like fighting game that you ever played. Was, was that like the first fighting game you ever really got into or was there something else before they just didn't necessarily like compete? Um, I was really into Smash 4, the, the game prior uh, and like, because that came out in like 2014 I got really into it, um, but then Ultimate is just kind of a better game and a more alive game, and so I got really into playing that one <laughs> more often. And so what was the motivation then to finally decide, like, well, I've been playing this game for a long time, I'm going to try competing in a tournament? So the same, the same kind of drive with Overwatch. Uh, I, I love how the DLC character Joker plays in, in Smash Ultimate. I, I mean, I love Persona, admittedly, um, but I just love how Joker plays in that game, and just like with Lucio, like if I take a really long break from Ultimate, I'll come back just because I love how he feels to play. Like I'll, I'll just, I just keep coming back. <laughs> but what was like, what what compelled you to be like, oh, specifically wanted to go to like a, a like tournament? Oh, I got you. Yeah, I started competing in my local scene um, mainly just because like I was kind of at that point where I was better than all my friends. Um, and I never really liked playing online. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why. I I just didn't like playing online. And so, as since you know, I live in the U.S., there's a lot of Smash tournaments around. And so I'm just like, I'm just gonna go try to find the people that I want to play with. I want to find more people. And so I just started going to a few locals. Uh, sometimes just to kind of like spectate and meet people. But I competed a couple times. Never did. Never did crazy. But I just thought I met a lot of cool people and it was a lot of fun. Fair enough. Yeah, I, that was kind of um, like a similar reason. Well, not quite a similar reason. I think the only like real tournament I did for fighting games, I played like MKX, like a convention. <laughs> and it was like kind of just for something to do. Because, you know, I'm not like, I don't hate conventions, but I think aspects of them kind of feel like outdated in a way. I, and I don't really like have a lot to do because I'm not like a big panel guy or whatever. So I figured oh, I'll participate in like an MKX tournament because like that was one that I played like, you know, like not professionally, but like I played a lot of it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and I just kind of felt I also just kind of had the like, you know, to just to try it out. You only live once. Right. I, yeah, might as well try. Uh, the only like kind of con that I have around where I'm at is Planet Comic Con every year and i'm i'm totally with you like i go there and i kind of just like walk around for two hours two or three hours i'm not really a big panel person i don't really <laughs> care about a lot of stuff but i just like to like look around um there was a smash tournament there a year or two ago and i should have signed up because my friend was the to and he said it was it was pretty easy <laughs> but yeah i just like just like looking around <laughs> no i gotcha yeah i mean i like the artist gallery you know, yeah, yeah. Like I think that's fine, but other than that, like I don't know, it's like a stupid thing. I'm so I'm sorry if this is kind of off topic, but um, you know, because the way that I conceive it, and maybe I'm wrong in my like my history of like anime convention, but like <laughs> I think in the past they made more sense because you know we didn't have like Amazon and stuff to like really buy merchandise, so. You know, having right. like these large conventions for like sellers to like sell their products to people, I think made more sense. But like post Amazon, like you kind of don't get a lot of like stuff for community. But even then, no, you know, like I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I'm just a hater. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, you said you've also uh, I think had interest in other fighting games. You briefly mentioned. That you had some interest in starting up Street Fighter Six. I don't know if there's any, there's been any change in that for you. Yeah, well, just like I've described in my past, it's all because of one character. Um, in Street Fighter Six, they uh, have Jamie 
uh and he does like drunken drunken boxing oh, I and i think it's I so I sick yeah yeah I, know. yeah I know that's it's so sick i i love that i mean i don't think people like playing against him from what i've learned <laughs> but okay. i i i do like him um yeah a big thing with uh, i guess i'll kind of just touch on this but like a lot of comments were calling me a fake fan of fighting games because i only mentioned that i played smash um but i do uh, like guilty gear as well i i'm self-admittedly not very good <laughs> but um strive and exert i've played some with my friends and it's a lot of fun and i've always been super into fighting game scenes but i've never been the kind of person that can really sit down and learn them <laughs> so oh yeah it makes sense no i've been really into street fighter 6 so i'm trying to convert more people into it <laughs> just have more opponents <laughs> um it's more elo yeah but uh, <laughs> no, I think uh, so. Right now, your current schedule is say that you roughly want to do um, like a video, like a video release a month. I think this month's been a. I don't know if this month's been a little bit different from you because I forgot to check the uh, the upload date for the the previous episode where you talked about like gender bedding yeah. episodes. Like, um, did that also come out this month? No, so that came out in uh, July because my first video came out in June. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. I, I forgot to check the dates for it. But, um, no, you're, you're good. With you starting college, um, but at the same time with you also kind of you know getting this big uh, boost in subscribership, do you see any change in that type of uh, in that schedule for yourself? Uh, not for right now. Actually, before we hopped on the call, I've been scripting a, my next video that's supposed to come out in September, and um, I already know what I'm going to make for October. Um, so this first this first semester of sophomore year, it's, it's pretty light. Uh, from what I've I've second day of classes already, it seems pretty light. Um, so I feel like I can still stick stick to that schedule. Um, but next year is really going to be the test of that. So, right. But I hope I hope to do it as much as I can. Are you ever kind of, uh, I mean, granted, I don't really like know you as a person necessarily, <laughs> but um, like, you know, with you having like a decent like following on YouTube, you even said that you're um, actually making somewhat like money uh, yeah. <laughs> doing YouTube videos. Do you ever worry that, uh, you know, that's going to kind of, I guess, like motivate you to like, I, I I don't know if I should really be talking about this, but for to motivate you to like necessarily like drop out because the logic is like, well, if you're already doing what you wanted to do, like what would be the point in your degree or Right. And I've I've had that thought, even though I'm I'm not even at ten thousand subs, I've had that thought. Um, and I don't want to put my all my eggs in one basket. Uh I think it's important to at least try to do both for as long as I can. And if I see that one is more fruitful than the other, um, then I'll just do that one. <laughs> so I'm going to try to stick with it as long as I can. And if it doesn't make sense here in, say, the next year and a half, year or two, like, then I'll consider it maybe. But for, for now, I really want to try to finish it out. Well, I have to remind, again, my listeners that Podcast Pasta, we support getting an education. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, guys, I drop know, like, out. I, I had another guest that basically said that they ditched a class to come on this. It's like, don't do that. Don't. Do that. <laughs> this isn't worth it. Nobody's listening to this far in. Don't worry. That's why. I, that, that's why I told you to to hit me up later because I was not with my classes today. I'm responsible. So. Right. Right. Good. Good. <laughs> Be responsible. Um. Yeah. But speaking of which, we are like kind of halfway in. Um. I've been trying to pioneer this question. I don't know how much success it really has, but you know, All right, let's see it. <laughs> I, I think it's still worth asking because I, I think it's interesting. Um, we have very much a difference in audience. You know, you are a, a essayist, and I'm kind of a, a you know a podcaster. I, I don't think right. we have that much. You know, the technical like uh, audience overlap. Yeah, overlap, overlap. There you go. Overlap yeah. <laughs> in our viewership. Um, so I guess you could take this time to. Is there any like topic or any idea that you don't think would come up in your own content that you feel like would be interesting 
but that would nonetheless feel interesting for uh, your viewers or your listeners or what have you. Um, it's kind of like a fun little Easter egg. So, like a video that I don't think I would end up making, or well, topic in general. You could also use this time to like rant about something, like you know, <laughs> throw some shade. Don't worry, like nobody's gonna listen. Nobody's listening. <laughs> I guarantee you. See, with that mindset, no one's gonna listen. <laughs> well, you know, you know, exactly okay. Because I've, dude, I, I've seen my own statistics. People only go like three <laughs> minutes in. They they leave a comment. They like. They sometimes dislike, and then they just they go on with their day. So you're fine. You're fine. I guarantee you, you're fine. <laughs> um give me your spiciest I, take my spiciest take okay 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 okay. so another thing that's important to understand about me is that i'm i'm a trans woman um i i am very i'm very open about that and i sometimes get some hate on that but that's that's not that's not the point here um there was another video that came out not too long ago called uh wire i think it's just like why are video games so gay now just like straight up almost my title and that video is <laughs> it's a video for sure it's a very bad faith very homophobic bad whatever and i would love to make a video kind of not necessarily critiquing or critiquing that guy's video in particular but make a video just kind of about why it's important to have representation in media um, but I've kind of stayed away from that because I know that I will get a lot of hate comments and dislikes and I don't really want to deal with that right now. <laughs> well, I guess, um, since you're here again, this is a safe space, um, <laughs> to express your ideas, because again, I guarantee you, nobody's listening to this. Um, <laughs> why is it important to have res- eh, representation in media? You know, I just think it's really cool to be able to see someone like yourself and media um like why i said i got in the guilty gear at all is because bridget was um revealed to be a trans woman which some people very very hot topic of discussion right there um but i just think once again i started playing guilty Gear because i thought she was really cool i ended up playing the very mainly johnny later on um but you know i just think it's really cool to be able to see yourself and stuff and um I don't know. It's just it's just a lot of people complain that representation often feels forced in a lot of games. But I feel like there's a lot of games that do it very very well. Um but I have I don't think I've played enough modern games to really go into that. And so I want to kind of try to play some more games to get some more examples, I guess. Oh, yeah, I actually um I think I agree myself, like, um, because I think that's like why you have sometimes a lot of bad faith attacks, representation in media, because, because, you know, again, a lot of people do know that having this, like, certain groups, um, in media is like, uh, how, how would I say it? Like, it is like <laughs> important for like normalizing these ideas yeah. in our day to day life. So yeah, I, I, that's why I also kind of advocate for um, representation. But, um, like for me, most of the time when people complain about about bad representation, to me, it's just well, really, they're just complaining about bad writing, right? Exactly, like, it has nothing that's to do with representation it. itself. And a lot of the times, people point to games that are just bad because they're bad, <laughs> like uh, the Saints Row remaster or remake or whatever it was. Well, it's just not a good game in general, and people were mad that some people represented it. Like, <laughs> it's like it's just not a good game from the get go. <laughs> oh yeah, or there's like God, there's a recent one that's going to be just culture war thing. Dustborn or something like that. Oh, um, not Dustborn. I feel like I know. Is it the uh, the Valve one? No, no, not, or, not Valve. No. Was, I think um, can't I can't remember the company. I'd- in like screenshots where um like cancel oh. is like a move you can do in the game or something actually the the guy who i was talking about earlier made a video hating on this this game's trailer yeah <laughs> there you go. yeah uh, like that's like another example of i think that's just a poorly developed game i don't I right to tackle issues of like representation or... yeah um yeah, I don't know. It's it kind of sucks that that's always kind of like a hard topic to talk about online now. Um, I uh, with my fighting game video, 
I I didn't want to ha- I didn't want to like police comments or anything, but I've had to delete probably two to four hundred comments calling me words I didn't even know existed. Uh, <laughs> uh, that are because uh, I got posted on 4chan a couple of times apparently, and it's like at that time I had five hundred subs. Like, what's the big deal? I don't I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's always kind of a well. I mean, for myself, that's always kind of a worry. As it could get yeah. picked up like that, because I've also had like similar videos where I talked about takes like that, but um, I don't know, past the point, I think you just can't necessarily worry about it, right? Yeah, I can't really care because I've had more people reach out to me telling me how much my stuff means to them, and so that kind of cancels it out. <laughs> so, well, good, and yeah, and like, congrats on all your success so far. Um, yeah, uh, thank you. If you don't <laughs> mind me asking, because you know, uh, you know. I am a content creator. Uh, how's your like growth been? Because I'm like, yeah, I mean, I guess, yeah, in general, how's your growth been? Uh, yeah, so wh- uh, so at the time that I po- posted Wire Fighting, I'm so gay, I probably had, I think it was like 500 subs and maybe 1,000, 2,000 channel views. Um, then that video got picked up by the algorithm and went up to around 60k views in like a week. Um, and then they kind of plateaued there. And then I already released Rimber Dinner Burning episodes, yeah, you would. That got over 200,000 views in about a month. And that also added another 100,000 views to Why I Fight a Game So Gay. And um, kind of, I kind of, I guess, found my audience, I guess you could say. And... Um, yeah, so they've just I've just <laughs> had that ex- explosion and growth there, and it's kind of gone over to other platforms too, like like Twitter, and I have a second channel where I post unedited stuff, and um, yeah, just me finding my audience, I guess, has really helped the uh, the growth. But yeah, I could kind of tell when it got picked up by the algorithm, like there was just a very big spike. <laughs> well, you're just racking dubs. Uh, I try. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure if you knew, if you necessarily know. You know, like if there was any content in particular that was like, you know, recommending because, like, for me, a lot of times the success of like anything I do, um, is usually because it piggybacks off of uh, other videos that are out there. Like I, I did, like, uh, yeah, yeah, talking about um, death in fighting games in the you know fighting game stories and it got piggybacked because of, like the fourth snake did like a video essay also talking mm. about like a similar topic uh do you know if like that happened with and with like your videos uh i can actually see right now what was recommending my content um it's mainly just other uh fighting game videos when my first one blew up like uh the visual paradox of fighting games released uh, a few months ago and right, that was a really good video essay just about like how they have evolved looking over the years and my fighting game video just by the nature of being about fighting games was kind of piggybacking off of that um and my gender bending episode that one was just like just recommended mainly just recommendations on the home page um i think like there was uh, quite a bit of um uh channel overlap with some other uh both guilty gear and like uh, lgbtq content creators that I haven't, I had never even heard of a lot of them, but apparently there's a lot of audience overlap, and my videos were getting recommended on a lot of their, uh, a lot of their videos. Um, but. and granted, I don't know yeah, how how much you can necessarily talk about this because you did mention earlier that like not only do you have like September's video uh, planned out, but as well as October's. Uh, could we get any like just? however brief you want to make it how like a glimpse into what your what future content you're going to release yeah so um there uh, in october i I want to do this one for quite a while now um there was a film that came out earlier this year called i saw the tv glow and i referenced that in my dinner bending episode video um and that is a film that really spoke to a lot of queer folk uh, in general and I, it's a horror film, and I really want to talk about how it uses gender as body horror. There's a few great video essays about um, that very topic, but they don't reference this movie that just came out. And so I want to specifically analyze this film and how it uses gender as body horror. I think it'd be really fun for like a Halloween type video. And um, 
So is that the September or the October video? That would be October. Um, September, I... So a lot of people were wanting me to cover body swapping episodes in cartoons. Um, but I thought that'd be kind of boring just to do it again. So I kind of talk about the trope as a whole and then talk about one of my favorite films, uh, Kimi no Wa or Your Name uh, in particular. Well, yeah, we're definitely uh, looking forward to that. I hope that further increases your ever-spanning growth on YouTube. <laughs> the empire, yeah. <laughs> um, thing is how, though... Um, I, I am also kind of a, a like a media channel. I do media broadly. For some reason, I've been mm-hmm. on a weird fix with like video game content lately. Um, but I guess uh, while I have you here, and because I always have fun talking about it, is there anything um, and talking about like the like tropes, right? Is mm-hmm. there any trope? I mean, I, that outside of like what you've covered that uh, you you dis dislike in media. Outside of like again, what you what you've covered in your video uh, that I dislike, um, I I don't really know. I I don't really know how to like I don't know, I don't know how to explain this, but I get really really bad secondhand embarrassment uh, when I watch stuff, and so I, I don't I don't know how to explain it as like a trope, but just anything that has to do with that i always get really anxious <laughs> um i don't even know what trope that would like relate to but overall i don't know if there's any tropes that i would say i like actively dislike or think are bad off the top of my head but... okay fair enough fair enough <laughs> um what was the next um oh so you do mention that you um stream but uh like, do you have a consistent schedule with that? Because I couldn't, like, really, uh, admittedly, I couldn't really find, like, too much on your Twitch channel. Really. Yeah, <laughs> I, need to, I need to update that. I, I don't think I've streamed in over a year. Um, but I used to be pretty consistent at streaming, like, Overwatch. And there's also this game called Crunker I was really into. I was really good at it. And so I had a lot of viewers, but they weren't necessarily, like, people who were there for me. They were there for the gameplay. Um, and... So if I sh- when I when I hope to start streaming again here in a little bit, I probably just want to do like Minecraft stuff, just kind of stuff that I don't have to actively think about or try too hard in the game, you know, so I can more interact with viewers and talk to chat and stuff. Oh, very cool, very cool. Definitely uh, looking forward to that. Uh, going back to Overwatch, you said that you no longer necessarily compete with your uh, college team. Do you think that would ever like change in the future? Like you would ever go back to competing, or um, yeah, yeah. Do you think you would ever go back to competing? Um, I'm I'm not sure. I actually stopped competing so I would have more time to focus on YouTube stuff. Um, right now is actually right right as we are talking right now. There is KU esports tryouts for Overwatch going on right now, um, and there is another Goldie Lucio player who is trying out right now. Um, but uh, my roommate Dax who I talk about a lot in my real recent video uh, he still plays for the team and I'm still in the server and everything I still love talking to the guys um, but I just kind of would rather put my time more towards making YouTube videos and content creation than playing Overwatch competitively so I just told him I wasn't going to compete this year because we have enough support players so (laughs) Mm, cool cool Um, okay this is not not to kind of like this isn't necessarily like a criticism that I have, but it is kind of a question that I did um watching like why your um why are fighting games like gay video mm-hmm. that you did is that um I, I wonder why why didn't you use the term queer over gay? <laughs> yeah. I had a lot of people ask me that. Yeah. Um sorry, is there something else you wanted to add? No, 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 no. Yeah, yeah. Just like why why did you use yeah. gay over queer? um i think it was funny that's literally the only reason uh <laughs> um I, when I, I i had a classroom i had to pitch this idea to and um a professor was was kind of like you know i feel like this the title of the video why are fighting i'm so gay could be uh taken as not necessarily i guess not derogatory but in a negative way but he's like he's like i know you can make it funny though and so i just thought it would be really funny and um 
also there's a, there's an article called why is the fgc so queer and so i didn't want to like take that same title as well so that was also a part of it oh makes sense so you don't have any reservations about using like queer at least in academic sense no i i just think i think i i think i do say queer a couple of times like as like a queer community um but i just think saying why are fighting games so gay is is funny <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's the reason no because i'm always kind of um interested in uh because um you know with like like film theory uh, a lot of like they they over they uh, actively use the term like queer media when talking about like mm-hmm. pertaining to like lgbtq uh plus um creators and like you know topics pertaining to that and i know that there's been like some kind of controversy in you know picking up that term because it did have like a negative connotation in the past but Mm -hmm. the way that i see it is that it's kind of like a reclamation of the term yeah i always like to get people's in on that yeah i I definitely agree with that sense for sure and that's kind of um kind of why i chose to use gay as well because i feel like gay has also kind of gone from being an insult to being just like i said just kind of funny um (laughs) some people would I mean, they still do, like, we'll say gay in a derogatory way, but now I feel like the meaning has shifted enough that I don't think people take it too seriously anymore, and that's why I was comfortable putting it as the title. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, you you continue to see this too, like, um, I think the most notable one is that uh, Hunter Schaefer mm-hmm. used the F slur in, like, an interview, yeah. right? And I know that made, like, a big buzz because, you know, um, like the F slur is kind of still in that awkward zone, I think, where mm-hmm. um, it's not like fully reclaimed. Like, obviously, it is a hateful way. Um, and no, I just, I, I just find like that development in language interesting, especially like in the past. Uh, thinking about like um, insulting terms back then. Like, I, I think there was a movie I saw. I can't remember the name of it, but where like Queen was used as like an insult for like queer people it's like okay like wow it's like all right cool um Um, i was gonna say kind of kind of on that i start my gender bending episode by saying look i have a problem i'm gay that's like how i start the video and it's a it's a very bold opener for sure and i was kind of worried that some people would be upset at that but I, don't, I to my knowledge no one was because they could kind of tell that's like i mean i am gay and i was saying it in a joking manner um i just thought it once again i just thought it'd be really funny um uh, it's a good hook a lot of it it obviously worked <laughs> so but oh yeah yeah um but i guess uh, i hate asking this question it, 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 i i say this every time but it's like such a good question but I feel <laughs> like it's like such a uh, i say this every time too but it's like such a job interview question right <laughs> but like even beyond you know the more immediate future like where do you see your channel and to some degree yourself in the future in terms of content creation or just i guess maybe life in general yeah i i mean i'll probably give you the most common response i don't really know um <laughs> i hope to just keep making videos and if people keep watching them then we'll see what happens um i'm gonna and even if no one's watching them i'm gonna keep trying um because now i have a little bit more of an audience and uh, I definitely have a core base of viewers now that will watch what I put out. Um, I'm just going to keep trying. If it doesn't work out, I'm just going to keep going through school. And if it does work out, I'll probably <laughs> keep going through school. Um, yeah, I'll, I see myself just like I've been trying for the last eight years. I'm just going to keep trying. <laughs> see what sticks. Well, I, I, I only wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Um, appreciate it. In terms of, uh, I, guess, I guess, also the growth of your channel, because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily in the same boat. I'm obviously an insanely <laughs> small creator. I have 30 <laughs> subscribers, all right? <laughs> and that should change. More people should subscribe and hit the bell right now. Yeah, it's, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. But, um, no, I guess, uh, you know, as your channel grows, um, you know, the question obviously arises of, like, monetization and like you know what paths you want to take in terms of like kind of making more money off of the work mm-hmm. put out in the world so i guess uh, 
What what for you would be the most ideal way to make money? Yeah, I I know it's not an ideal way. I I wish AdSense would provide enough revenue. Um, I also but I also hate putting ads on my videos. Like my most recent video, which is just forty minutes long, I only put two ads on, um, just because I I don't like ads, and I know people don't like them either. Um, I I've been thinking about opening memberships because I know a lot of people do that, and it's a great way to get revenue. Um, but I don't feel like I have enough to give right now to make it feel like it's worth it on my end. I don't want to just ask people for money. That's I don't I want to I want to actually provide something of value to them. Um, so yeah, probably memberships. I'm gonna open up in the next maybe a few months once I feel like I have something more that I can provide. Um, I also have a Ko-Fi page that people can support directly, but I don't. I I'm not gonna ask people to. It's that's their choice. <laughs> um, but yeah, ultimately, probably off of memberships and a little bit of ad revenue. I think that's how a lot of people do it. Um, yeah, that's, that's how I look at it right now. <laughs> so wait, um, because again, tiny YouTuber here. Um, <laughs> you could choose not to put ads on your videos. Okay, so yes and yes and no. Uh, um, so yeah, you can you can choose to. If I wanted to, I could turn monetization off on my videos. I could say no ads. Um, and if it's over eight minutes, you could put however many ads you want on it. Um, but YouTube will also automatically put ads on it if you turn it on. Um, so I think for my Wi-Fi Games OK video, YouTube wanted to put like seven ads on it. And I'm just like, yeah, we're not doing that. <laughs> it's a 25 minute video. We're not doing that. Uh, and so I, uh, I took out quite a few. Um, but yeah, you can turn it off or on if you want. Uh, if you really like i know sometimes with youtubers like like apology videos and stuff like that they'll turn off monetization so yeah you can just do that with your videos man it really is different at the top <laughs> um but so you don't you don't see yourself in the future because i know like patreon is obviously like the big path i think for a lot of people um is is that something that you'd see yourself pursuing uh yeah yeah probably it's probably once again just kind of on that once i feel like i have a better idea of what i want to provide um and i feel like i have enough stuff to show that would be worth paying for i would i'd be down um i'm, t I'm totally like i was gonna say oh yeah i was i've been doing uh what i like to call quote unquote market research and just kind of look at what other creators i like are doing and a lot of them have patreons and they'll just kind of like give you shout outs at the end of the video or like give you exclusive cuts of a video or maybe you could vote on what the next topic is going to be and so i'll probably see myself kind of doing something along those lines once i feel more comfortable and providing something that's like worth paying for hmm. very cool very cool um one thing that i guess i kind of had to ask you because you did mention that um latest video about taking us through your history with gaming uh, you're a big fan of Gurren Lagann, and that's uh -huh. part of the reason why you have, uh, I believe the character is Kamina, right? As Kamina, a, yeah. As your picture. Um, have you ever... And I said, and you said, like, for the most part, that you didn't want to, like, move away from, like, having that as your profile picture, but are you, are you... As you grow the channel, do you think that you would ever, like, need to as a means of, like, you know, brand recognition? Or, like... Do you uh, Yeah. I, I was just yeah, uh, well, uh, I kind of have two things. The amount of people that have commented on my videos saying, I only watched because your profile picture, and then they like stuck around, like it's, it's, it's more than you would think. Uh, there are a lot of, of people out there who love Girl and the God as much as I do. Um, but I also, I have a friend of mine who's an artist, and I commissioned um, some new art from her a little while ago. And so I'll probably change my branding around to keep at least with the theme of the character because she's still important to me. Um, but yeah, I just think it's kind of iconic at this point. I've had this profile picture for a very long time, and now I, I, I see I've seen a few Twitter posts where they like screenshot my video or something, and people will be like, "Oh my god, this person does call me now as a profile picture," <laughs> and so I'm just gonna kind of ride with it for as long as I can. <laughs> the concern for me, I don't know, I'm hyper about this, especially recently. I had um because I was using a public domain movie because i have like b-roll if you're watching mm -hmm. this as a video podcast i usually like i have a b-roll time it's me like just playing a game but sometimes i do like a public domain movie to kind of break it up mm -hmm. um and uh 
I recently, well, not got in trouble, but it turns out that one of the public domain movies I had, which was like The Passion of Joan of Arc, right? Because of how France handles its uh, copyright. They, they have like moral rights or something beyond copyright. And so basically my video was like restricted to everywhere but the United States. It was like 256 like regions. <laughs> Right, so I, I don't know. I, I don't know if it's just like particularly now I'm like hyper vigilant about copyright, but um, I I just don't know like if you would have like any issues like in Kamina as like your profile picture because you know that's technically a, a you know an image uh, yeah. of like a copyrighted property. Yeah, no, I've um, through all my film classes and stuff, I've been very well aware of copyright and. I've had stuff taken down in the past for using music I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> um, yeah, and even if I can't, um, I, there are a surprising amount of YouTubers, if you look around, that will use the like the glasses he wears, those big red glasses in their profile pictures or somewhere in their branding. Um, and so I might end up doing that. Um, like uh, when I was doing Twitch, one of my sub badges was like a, a drawing I made of the glasses or like other, other things <laughs> that are like, loosely tied to the series or the character but not necessarily the character in general um i've definitely thought about changing my branding and profile picture a couple times throughout the last few years but it's just kind of like become so normal for me to see it that i just haven't changed it <laughs> right like you kind of grow attached to it over time exactly but um i'm trying to think how what else i want to ask I, um oh i guess like, well, I mean, you, you did give us kind of like the full breadth of it, but, um, you know, outside of like you know, playing like Overwatch and, you know, fighting games. And so I guess like your relaxation game is like Minecraft, right? Or do you play anything else to like kind of relax away from like the more like competitive games? Uh, Bloons Tower Defense 6, 100%. Oh, that's I lo right. I, I love BTD6 so much. Yeah, I have a Dart Monkey plushie in my car. Uh, it's my most played Steam game. Um, I've watched a lot of video essays, like on my second monitor while playing Bloons. Uh, that's kind of how I got a lot of inspiration for stuff. Uh, yeah, I just, I just love that game so much. But yeah, Minecraft, that game, I'm looking at my desktop right now. Those are pretty much the only things as of late I've been playing. So, Well, and like Persona when you did the playthroughs of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I really like... I really like single-player games. I'm not really a multiplayer game head, which is funny because like I play play games competitively but it was literally just like just like overwatch is the only it's the only fps i've really ever played uh i played splitgate when that came out but i wasn't very good at it <laughs> um but yeah i i mainly just stick to single player games um but there's kind of like a difference between like a game that i have to be engaged engaged in and a game that could be like a second monitor game like bloons so right i got you um i think uh well i guess i could take the time to talk about it now um yeah, I'm kind of surprised that, like, uh, do you ever think that you would do, like, a video talking about, like, you know, Minecraft or, like, any Minecraft-related, like, topics like that? Honestly, probably not. I, I don't really have much to say on it other than I really liked it as a kid. I don't have any, uh, I don't have any thoughts that I think are, are deeper thoughts or anything, and I don't think I really have a unique angle that I think is interesting, so probably not. Yeah, no, and that's interesting because admittedly, I'm not the biggest Minecraft guy. Mm -hmm. I haven't played for quite a while. Yeah. I, it comes in bursts. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really big into, um, I mean, I'm not big into like the whole like, oh God, what, what, what would you call it? Like that crafting, there's a specific Sandbox? name that a lot of like content creators use, crafting genre or what have you. Um. Not to say that I haven't played it most of the time, but I can only like tolerate them in like multiplayer if that makes sense. Mm, yeah, I got you. Like I can't, I can't like so be, because you like play the games like by yourself, right? Most of the time, um, I, uh, I who I mentioned already, Dax. I would I played I'd played Minecraft with him for hours and hours on end uh, on PS4, but now I kind of just do stuff on my own. <laughs> well, I, I I guess I have to ask you because you know. I, I am curious, like, what is the what is the draw for you with? I don't know. I actually like being able to like kind of chill out and build stuff. Um, not even like the new updates are really draws for me. Um, I, I'll play on the new updates, but 
I rarely ever utilize the new features. Um, I don't know, just being able to just take a bunch of time and make something and then show it off later to my friends or like just be proud of it in general. Uh, I have taken. I think my my lock screen on my P- my PC is like a screenshot I took of my base at some point. <laughs> it's been like that for a year or two. Um, yeah, just like kind of being able to hang out, chill out, and like listen to a podcast or listen to an album or something, and just build something cool. Yeah, I don't know. I I guess it's just how my brain is wired because I, like my brother is a bigger fan of like mm-hmm. a crafting type game, and he gets into the building. But like for me. I don't know if it's just like I'm a minimalist at heart or I just really like brutalist architecture, but it's just like box house. There you go. <laughs> that's like that's like it for me. Green top. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I do get like more involved in like narrative based games. So maybe that's right. like lack of appeal of it for me. But um we are approaching uh the hour mark. Uh thank you all so much for you know, those of you who stuck around this far which would be like five of you (laughs) Um, who stuck around in this episode to listen to us talk uh goldie if you want to shout out where people can find you where people can find and support your uh content go ahead yeah i'm a co2 goldie on pretty much every platform uh not c02 as some people think it is no it's co2 uh goldie (laughs) on twitter youtube all that kind of stuff Awesome, awesome. And yes, do give Goldie a follow. Uh, before I let you all go, I just have to uh, say that when you're cooking with plantains, the keys, um, I, I should mention this, that when you're cooking with plantains, you don't want to put them in the fridge as that can make it very difficult to like peel the outer layer off. Ideally, you should leave it kind of in a counter, but make sure that it doesn't ripen too much. Like you want green plantains, especially for uh, plantain chips and mangu. Because uh, I find like when they ripen, like it just makes it too sweet. Like you kind of want the savoriness of a green plantain with those dishes in particular. So there you go. Uh, Thank you so much for joining us and take care.